Hello YouTube, Roslyn here. Got a Persona 3 Reload video for you today. Don't mind the setup, I know it's different from my usual scripted content, but with Yakuza 8 and now Persona 3 Reload both coming out within a week of each other, it's been pretty rough trying to get through two JRPGs and put content out at the same time. I'm actually recording this just after a stream, twitch.tv slash Gaming, by the way, link in the description if you want to come hang out. But uh, yeah, anyways, we are doing a Persona 3 Reload video, and I'm going to be showcasing two early game Persona. I've actually been asked in the past when I put out my other Persona videos or my Demon Fusion videos, I usually do mid game to late game, and I've always been asked if I have any early game Persona, and that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to be showcasing two early game Persona that I've actually used in my Merciless playthrough thus far. Alright, so for this first Persona, we're going to be taking a look at this 5 element Fortuna. It can hit everything except for the dark element with Aeha. Now you can get Aeha on Fortuna, but the minimum level is level 22. And the one I'm going to be showcasing here can be made at level 15. But it's fine that you can't get Aeha because you don't need it for the first two areas anyways. So you have access to Agi, Bufu, Zio, Garu, and Koha. And then at the end there, you can see I have Spirit Drain and Spirit Ability. Both of these can be gained through skill cards, and they are invaluable, especially Spirit Drain at a bare minimum. This is because of the changes to how the clock works in Tartarus that used to be able to restore your HP and SP. It's now much, much more restrictive in how many times you can use it. And so having the ability to drain 20 SP or up to 40 SP if you have drain ability from other enemies is invaluable for being able to just stay in Tartarus for much longer. If you are interested in getting both of these abilities, they're not necessary, but if you are interested in getting them, Basically what you need to do is as you're working your way through Tartarus, you'll eventually get major Arcana cards. Once you've gotten enough Arcana cards to have an Arcana burst, you'll start getting higher level cards. When you're in the first block, you can actually go to the higher levels of the first block that you're in, and whenever you're defeating enemies there, you'll have a chance to have tier 3 cards drop from those enemies. If you hit a tier 3 skill card, that being the one with the three little swords, that will have the chance of being Spirit Drain or Drain Ability. So if you feel if you get lucky to get one of those or you feel like kind of farming for it a little bit, that's where you can get this from very early on. It's from those tier three skill cards after you've Arcana bursted in the first block. So with that explanation out the way, let's go ahead and show how we can make this five element Fortuna. All right, so for this Fortuna, the base version with just the five elements is actually incredibly easy to do. You need an Angel, a Silky, an Omoi Kane, and a Lilum. And for step one, you want to fuse the Lilum and Omoi Kane in order to make a unicorn. And then we're going to be passing down Augie and Zio here. Alright, and once you have that unicorn made, we can back out and go to Special Fusion, Fortuna, and make our Fortuna here. Inheriting Augie, Zio, and Koha, which will give this Fortuna the five base elements other than Aeha. And with that, you have a five element Fortuna. At this point, you would put on the skill card for Spirit Drain and Drain Ability if you have them. If you don't, that's fine. They're not necessary. It just makes it a bit easier. But you do now have a five element Fortuna that can let you hit every single enemy's elemental weakness, assuming they have one, for the first two blocks. All right, and the next persona I'm going to be showcasing is this physical damage focused Neko Shogun. Now, I specifically chose this one because I made it specifically for the Clairvoyant Relic fight, which I believe is on floor 42. I've heard that people are having trouble with that fight, and hopefully this persona and then the strategy I'll talk about will get you through it relatively easily. Essentially, what this persona is trying to do is you have Assault Dive, which is a medium hitting ability that can deal some decent physical damage, and it has an innate, I think it's like 13% chance to critically strike, which is then boosted by crit rate boost. You have the Auto Tarukaja and Auto Sukukaja, those are kind of just bonuses. And then you have Tarunda, which is used to uh, reduce the enemy's attack. The Dodge Wind comes from a skill card. It's relatively easy to get, though I forget which skill card level it is. I can't remember if it's a 3 or a 4. I had a couple of them sitting around just by randomly collecting them as I made my way up to the boss, but it's not necessary to have, it's just kind of a little bit of an insurance policy. So what you want to do with this persona for the boss fight is you want to kind of have your main character on a rotation of having him go Tarunda, Assault Dive, Assault Dive, Tarunda, Assault Dive, Assault Dive, and you basically just repeat this through the entirety of the fight. This will make sure that you're getting some damage in, and it will also make sure that you are keeping the Tarunda debuff on the enemy to reduce the amount of damage that the Clairvoyant Relic is doing. Now when I did this, I actually did it without Akihiko. 
I chose to go early because it just worked out better for the way I'd planned everything out to go to Tartarus as soon as possible as opposed to waiting for him, so I actually fought the relic with only three characters. However, the relic is very predictable. In my case, with only three characters, he did a rotation of Zionga, then Bufala, then Garula. If you have Akihiko with you, this may change. He may add a fourth ability to it. You'll just have to take note of which one he uses. But once he has his rotation set, he will use that rotation of spells for the entirety of the battle with one exception. And that's when you get him to about half HP. He'll cast an AoE debuff down on you. At that point, you'll just want to guard with everybody. Though if you have to put up uh, Tarunda again to do that and then guard with everyone else. And then he'll figure out what ability he uses and then go back into the rotation. So essentially what I mean by this rotation is because I knew he was going to use Zionga on the first turn, I had my main character cast Tarunda, I had Yukari guard because he was going to hit her with Zionga, and then I had uh, Junpei attack. On the next turn, it was Bufala. I was safe, so I went assault dive, then with Yukari, I healed if necessary, if not, I attacked, and then with Junpei, I just had him attack. On the third turn, I used another assault dive with my main character, I healed if necessary with Yukari, if not, I attacked, and then I had Junpei go ahead and guard because I knew he was going to get hit with Garula. From there, I just repeated this until the boss battle was over. So now that that explanation is out of the way, let me show you how to actually make this thing. Alright, so for this Neko Shogun, you're going to need a Valkyrie, Lilum, Inugami, and Omoraki. If you do want the Auto Sukukaja, the Valkyrie does need to be level 12. If you don't care about that, then any level of Valkyrie will work. But for the first step, we're going to be fusing this Valkyrie with an Inugami to make a Zochoten. And we're going to be passing down the Auto Sukukaja. Alright, and if at this point, if you don't get the Auto Tarukaja through level up and you do want it, you will need to level him up to level 15. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what level he is here. So, at that point, we can then fuse this uh, Zochoten with a Omaraki to make a Tomlin. And then we're going to be passing down the crit rate boost and then the Tarunda. And if you do have the Auto Tarukaja and Sukukaja and want them, go ahead and pass those down as well. And then finally, we can fuse Lilum with Tom Lin to make our Neko Shogun, passing down the skills we want. For sure, you want the Tarunda and the Crit Rate Boost. And then if you decided you wanted them as well and went for them, the Auto Tarukaja and Auto Sukukaja. And then it is at this point that if you do have a skill card for Dodge Wind, you can go ahead and add that for a little bit of extra protection, but it's not entirely necessary. And that will actually finish the Neko Shogun. And that'll also be it on this quick video going over to early game Persona I actually used in my own Merciless playthrough for Persona 3 Reload. If you found this video helpful and informative, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you have any questions about this video, Persona 3 Reload, or any other game that I cover, you can always hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming or my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description below. Until next time, take care.